Hello. So what we're going to do in this video is introduce the idea of polar coordinates. So let's get started right away. All right, so suppose that we have a point in the xy plane somewhere in here. So how do we specify the position of the point? So, so far we've always used Cartesian coordinates, right? So we denote the position of the point by specifying two quantities, x and y, which correspond to the x coordinate and the y coordinate of the point. But it turns out that there's another way and that we can specify the location of points on the plane. And this is the idea of polar coordinates. All right, so how does it go? Well, the first thing is to realize that for any point on the plane, it must lie on a circle centered at the origin. Right? This point here lies on this kind of Im imaginary circle here, which is centered at the origin. All right, so how can we specify the position of the point? So one thing we could do is specify the radius of that circle. So I'm going to call that R. And then specify the angle of rotation. So by convention, we're always going to define the angle as being, to, uh, being the angle between uh, this line here and the x-axis. So I'm going to define this angle here as being theta. So in other words, to specify the position of the point, instead of uh, giving the x and y coordinates, I could give the radius r and the angle of rotation theta. This is what's called polar coordinates. So for example, if I give you the point with polar coordinates 1 and pi over 2, where is this located in the plane? Well, this is located on a circle of radius 1, and the angle of rotation from the x-axis is pi over 2. So it will actually be on the y-axis and at the distance 1 from the origin. So this point P has Cartesian coordinates given by xy is equal to 0, 1. And polar coordinates given by r theta is equal to 1 pi over 2. All right, so there's a certain number of things to notice here. First is that we can define polar coordinates for any point on the plane. Indeed, any point will lie on a circle of a certain radius and be given by a certain angle of rotation. So we can certainly give polar coordinates for any point on the plane. Second, polar coordinates are not uniquely defined. So for example, if you take the polar coordinates r theta, this defines a point on the plane. But if I look at the polar coordinates r theta plus 2 pi, it turns out that this is the exact same point on the plane, right? Because I'm still on the circle of radius r, and I'm just doing one more rotation around the circle. So I'll use this notation here to say that these are two choices of polar coordinates for the same point on the plane. And in, in fact, this is true for any polar coordinates of the form r theta plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. So all of those represent the same point on the plane. But in fact, it's even more than that. So, so far I've defined the first polar coordinate r as being the radius of the circle centered at the origin on which the point lies. So r must be positive. But we want to allow negative r. So if I have a point p here with polar coordinates r theta, I'll define the point with polar coordinates minus r theta as being the point on the same circle but on the other side of the origin. All right, but then you see that the point with polar coordinates minus r theta and the point with polar coordinates r theta plus pi are actually exactly the same, right? Because the second one uh, is defined as follows. I start at r theta and then do half a rotation about the circle, and then I end up at minus r theta, right? So these two are the same point. So polar coordinates are definitely not uniquely defined. If you want to specify the location of a point on the plane using polar coordinates, there are many different ways you can do that. So the third thing that I want to mention here is that we can relate polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. So if I have a point in the plane with polar coordinates r theta, how do I get the Cartesian coordinates x and y of this point? Well, let me draw a vertical line here. Then we can read it off directly from the graph. The x-coordinate of the point will be given by r times the cosine of theta, and the y-coordinate will be given by r times sine of theta. Now, this little triangle here only works if theta is between 0 and pi over 2. But the relation here is completely general, as you can prove. It's a good exercise to do that. Okay, so if we know the polar coordinates, we can extract the Cartesian coordinates. Can we go the other way around? If you know Cartesian coordinates, can you get the polar coordinates of the point? Well, first you realize that if you take the square of these two equations and add them up, so x squared plus y squared, on the right-hand side you get r squared times cosine squared plus sine squared, which is just 1. So you end up with just r squared on the right-hand side. And if you take the second equation and divide by the first, you get that y over x 
is equal to tan of theta. So these two equations together gives you a way of getting polar coordinates from Cartesian coordinates. If you know x and y, then you can find r and theta that satisfy these equations. Of course, r and theta are not uniquely defined. There are many different choices, as we've just seen. But this gives you a way of extracting at least one choice of polar coordinates that works. So now that we know how to define polar coordinates, we can study curves in the plane using polar coordinates. So a curve in the plane will be given by all the points that are such that their polar coordinates satisfy a given equation written in terms of r and theta. So if you're given uh, the equation of the curve in this way, we call it a polar curve. Now, sketching polar curves is not always obvious. So let me do a first example. If I give you the equation r is equal to 1, what is the corresponding polar curve on the plane? Well, here I'm looking at all the points that lie on a circle of radius 1. So what curve do I get? Well, I'll just get a circle of radius 1. Right? So this is the polar curve given by r is equal to 1. As a second example, let me look at the polar curve defined by the equation theta is equal to pi over 4. So here I'm looking at all the points on the plane that lie, that have an angle of 45 degrees with the x-axis. So if r is positive, that gives me that all these points will form the line segment starting at the origin and going all the way to infinity. But I also need to include the points with negative r, so these will be the points on the other side of the origin, and I end up with a line, which is the line y equals to x. So in other words, the line y equals to x uh, is defined by the equation theta equals to pi over 4 as a polar curve. All right, so these two examples were relatively simple, but sketching polar curves can be pretty complicated. So let's look at the very simple looking equation r is equal to cos of 2 theta. What is the corresponding polar curve? So I'm not going to do it here, but I'll leave that as an exercise. I just want to show you the result. So if you sketch the graph of that polar curve, what you end up with is something that looks like this, which is really cool. It's a beautiful four-leafed rose. How amazing. All right, so now that we know how to define polar curves, we can ask standard calculus questions about them. For example, how do we get the equation of the tangent lines to a polar curve? All right, so we're going to focus here on the particular class of polar curves that we can write as r is equal to a function of theta. So what can we do to get the tangent line? So the idea here will be to think of theta as a parameter and then think of the polar curve as a parametric curve in Cartesian coordinates. So more specifically, so we know that x is equal to r cos theta. So if r is equal to f theta, I can write this as f theta cos theta. And similarly for y, I get y is equal to r sine theta, which is f of theta times sine of theta. So I can think of both x and y as functions of theta, and this defines a parametric curve, just as we've seen previously. So now we can use what we've learned about parametric curves to get the equation or the slope of the tangent lines to a polar curve. So from our previous study of parametric curves, we know that the slope of the tangent lines will be given as follows. So it's given by dy dx, but now, because y and x are functions of the parameter theta, this is equal to dy d theta over dx d theta. But now we can evaluate that explicitly. So y is given by r sine theta, where r is a function of theta. So dy d theta can be calculated using the product rule. I'll get dr d theta times sine theta plus r cosine of theta. And for dx d theta, I'll get dr d theta cosine of theta minus r sine of theta. So that gives us an expression for the slope of the tangent lines to any polar curve which is written in the form r is equal to f of theta. All right, so as an example, we can take our four-leafed rows, which was the polar curve given by the equation r equals cos of 2 theta, and ask what the slope of the tangent line to this curve is at the point with coordinate theta equals to pi over 2. So what we need to do now is substitute this equation in our general formula. So first we calculate that dr d theta for us here is minus 2 times sine of 2 theta. And then substituting this in the expression for the slope, we get that the slope of the tangent lines for this polar curve will be given by minus 2 sine 2 theta times sine theta, 
plus cos 2 theta, so r is equal to cos 2 theta times cos of theta divided by minus 2 sine of 2 theta cos theta minus cos of 2 theta sine theta. All right, but now we are interested in the slope at a particular point with polar coordinate theta equals to pi over 2. So at this point, the slope will be given by evaluating at theta equals to pi over 2. So the first term here as a sine of 2 theta, which gives sine of pi, which is 0. So I get 0. For the second term in the numerator, I get a cos of theta. So cos of pi over 2 is 0. I also get 0. In the denominator, the first term here has a cos of theta, so that's also 0. But the second term here is minus cos of 2 theta, which is cos of pi, so that's minus minus 1 times sine of pi over 2, which is 1. So I get minus minus 1 times 1, so plus 1. But in the end, I get 0 for the slope of the tangent line at this point. So tangent line at this point should be horizontal. Now let's see whether that makes sense. So what is the point on the graph here with a polar coordinate theta equals to pi over 2? Well, this is the point with polar coordinates r theta given by so r is equal to cos of 2 theta. Theta is pi over 2, so I get cos of pi, which is minus 1, and theta is pi over 2. So what is this point? Well, first, this point here would have polar coordinates 1 pi over 2, right, because it's rotated by pi over 2. So if I take r to be minus 1, I look at the point on the other side of the origin. So this is the point with polar coordinates minus 1 pi over 2. And indeed, this is a point which has a horizontal tangent line, just as we calculated. All right, so that's it for today.